Uh, I was thinking we had to stand uh, in between the young generation and the old generation, uh, in between the Nora Church and the other churches from Chigari, and the Chigari Church and the other church from uh, far away. Uh, but before going there, uh, let, uh, I want, first of all, to thank you. This is a wonderful Sunday. I love it so much. I'm happy I'm here today. Uh, this is my first Sunday after being consecrated as the senior pastor. So um, I'd like to say thank you for uh, all you did, for the journey we went together, and we are still together. And uh, once again, uh, the, this week uh, is uh, a week of blessing for me uh, because on, on Wednesday, we got blessed as in the family with a beautiful baby girl. So I want to refresh your mind from the panel, from the discussion. Uh, I want to let you know that God uh, is at work, still working with us, uh, blessing uh, his people, and uh, I want again to take this uh, time to welcome our our guests that we are together uh, the whole week, uh, Pastor Don and uh, Mrs. Yan, you are welcome, and uh, thank you for coming to be with us. Uh, Pastor Don started to be here to come in Rwanda since 1994, so 92, she's uh, familiar with uh, uh, with, with Rwanda. Once again, you're welcome. We'll be together in this week that we are starting tomorrow. We have a week of prayer. We are praying for revival. We'll be talking about the, the power of the Holy Spirit. There are things that you cannot explain through discussion, the panel. There are things that will grasp from the Holy Spirit. So I am inviting you. And uh, there are things that we have in the church that was not led by anyone and so we need that time again. As we come from the panel, and again, uh, yeah, I, I love it. I have been part of this preparation, and I love it. And uh, as she mentioned, this is a session one. We have other sessions, but let's bring the discussion together with uh, listening to what the Lord is calling us to be. Hallelujah. So thank you. And again, I'd like to say thank you to Brother Joseph from UK for being with us uh, uh, all the two weeks and the, the work you did to serve the Lord. Thank you so much. Uh, the panelist, Brother Teogen, thank you. And uh, Mrs. Christine, actually, uh, Christine was my boss sometime. And uh, I'm happy to see you again. And uh, so, I don't know if you are representing the old generation. Or <laughs> when I was introducing this uh, panel to Pastor Yan, who is uh, 83, and they're saying that you have uh, the representative of old generation, uh, she asked me, how old are they? And, uh, <laughs> and I said, they are of my age. And, and uh, she, she laughed because we are half of her age. And then I don't know if we are presenting the old generation. I will be uh, curious to know what the real old generation will say when they sit here. <laughs> so, and uh, once again, thank you to Brother Gilbert and uh, Zuzu and the moderator uh, who has be been doing a great work Thank you so much. If we can clap for them again for, uh, for the content, for sharing the truth that they have in their heart. And uh, then standing here, uh, the, the theme we have today is uh, about ministry uh, or mission continuity. And uh, the, the verse that we are using is uh, from uh, the first book of Timothy. The book of Timothy, yeah, it's uh, second Timothy chapter one, verse five. 
it says, I am reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother, Lois, and in your mother, Eunice, and uh, I am persuaded now lives in you also. Something that was in your grandmother, the same in your mother, and it's in you. Here, we are talking about the continuity. So, uh, something that helped me to find something to share with you is that you are talking about a continue, not a starting. That means there is someone who started. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today we are talking about ministry or mission continuity. We are not talking about starting a mission. We are not talking about starting a ministry. That reminds us that there is someone who owns, who started the ministry. And that one is older than everyone because he's the creator. He's there from the beginning. That's why no matter of ages, because he was there. And again, he's younger than anyone because he can't he can even speak to the babies. Hallelujah. And uh, he's rich. He's richer than anyone because he owns everything. He's smarter than anyone because he knows even how to live in the heaven. So he's so smart. That is Jesus Christ. And again, the one who knows how to live in the heaven knows how to live in the world to the level he's able to visit people in the community down there. He is able to be in the, in the, in the, in the family, like the family for Joseph and Mary. And again, able to take a decision to be in the manger from the above. So that's the one who owns the ministry. As uh, Paul said in the Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, the one who begins the work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, I know very well that the one who started the ministry, the work, that one is Jesus. So being here today discussing on the ministry continuity, I would like to remind you, to challenge you again, that the owner of the ministry is with us, and is Jesus Christ, and he wants to engage all of us. And... Uh, Why did Jesus call you? Why did Jesus choose you? Why did Jesus come? The response is in John chapter 3, verse 16. Because of God has loved so much, me and you. And uh, he gave his dear son, Jesus Christ, to die. So Why? For whoever, hallelujah, who believe, who accept, who embrace his love, never perish, but have the eternal life. He focused on that again in John chapter 10, verse 10, when he said, I came for my people to have eternal life. So now, talking about continuing the ministry, it goes with Loving Jesus, accepting Jesus, working with Jesus, remaining in Jesus. Because you can't keep the, myth, the mission of Jesus when you are not with Jesus. So he's encouraging all of us to, to remain, to stay. He saved you for eternal life. He called you to follow him. He called you to fellowship with Jesus. And he called you to worship and to glorify him. And that's why all decisions that we take in our journey, we have been in the journey of reform of the church. I know what we are talking about is minor than what we have. And But whatever we do, all decisions we take, it's good to... Uh, challenge yourself, is this being selfish or I'm doing this to glorify the Lord? Is this to create my own space 
my comfort, or I want to glorify the one who moved from the comfort zone to heaven and come to see me. So we need to go with Jesus whenever we want to change something. Um, I know there are things to change. I don't want to say many things. There are things to change. But it's good to know what, if we have what is unchangeable. You know that. It's good to know if we really have what is unchangeable. Because there are other many things that we can change. But if we don't own what is unchangeable, what made Jesus to come from heaven and come to us, whatever will change will be nothing. So it's good to challenge yourself before discussing on what you need to change. Do I have what is uh, unchangeable, what, Je what made Jesus to come? So he, he called you to be an agent of the kingdom and to be the heirs of the kingdom. That's why that I'm encouraging if you are not comfortable with this or that, remember, though I'm not comfortable, but this is a family. This is my family. God has called you to be in the family. And uh, it's the same, uh, remember the family that you are living together. Sometimes you have uh, challenges with our spouses and the children, but though there are challenges, you don't say, oh, you know, we, are not, uh, we, we don't agree on this and that. Therefore, I live because the connection that is there, what, what we are discussing, it's good to understand as a church. And again, as other people, the good things you have, why Jesus started this, uh, this church at the pearl, and the, what God is using in the, uh, for his kingdom, using at the pearl, is bigger than what you are discussing. Hallelujah. The reason why now we are in all communities, being in all communities, you know, ADPL has more than 3,000. That means we are in all communities. ADPL reach to many people. So what God is using to, to, for the kingdom of God is bigger than what you are discussing. That's why even when there are issues that we are still discussing, never have in mind, I will go. Where are you going? Never go, stay. You know, when you are in the team, you, you can change. You can, you can, you can. But when you are outside the team, you are missing the point. That's why I would like to encourage you. This is a family. It's a family, and uh, Ade, don't take Adepel as a name. Don't take Adepel as a, the discipline, but see what God has been using. Do you see the work that God did and they used Adepel as a tool to reach to many and different people. And uh, I am saying that God has calling you, has called you to be an agent of the kingdom. Uh, we are called to continue his ministry. It's good to know that the ministry we have is to glorify God. I love what Isaiah said in, uh, uh, in chapter 43, chapter 43, verse 7. Everyone who I called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and I made, you are called, you are created to glorify the, the name of the Lord. God is calling you. Be in the space, be in the mood, be in the life of glorifying the, glorifying the Lord. And uh, that means you belong to Jesus. That means you are called to bring more people to Jesus. That means you are called to advance the kingdom of God to other many people. And uh, the church I mean here, uh, in the, the activity, I remember, uh, I love what the panelists shared about the programs that we can bring that are friendly to youth, uh, like hacking. You know what, Gilbert, sometimes when you, you say something, 
uh, to old people, when you say hacking to Pastor Yan, he, she say, I will not be there at the top of the mountain. So they want to be there alone. So what I'll be doing there. So instead of finding someone who will go with you, say, ah, it's good that you stay here. <laughs> it's good that you stay here. Because when you go for hacking, there are some people who will say, oh, what's the height of the mountains? And they say, I can't be there. Therefore, <laughs> therefore, the ministry continuity, it's calling us to be flexible to other ways, other means that Jesus can use to reach to other different many people. So the old generation are called to be flexible, to listen to that there are other ways that Jesus can use. And uh, there is something uh, that's more than activities. Something that is more than activity. It's what is in us, is the, the why we do what we are doing. And uh, yeah, actually, we can spend time talking about activities. It's good to think about the activities that we can use to reach to many and different people. I love, uh, when, when, when I talk to youth, I can listen to them. And when I talk to old people, I can listen to them because, because I stand between, in between. And uh, I don't have that choice because I'm leading all of them. <laughs> I, I am leading all of them. When I go in the countryside, in the, some corners of the country, and they, when I pick some people and they bring them here, we can have a different discussion in the panel. Right. We can he have different ideas. And, uh, but what I take, what I keep is uh, why Jesus is calling us what Jesus wants everyone to be and to do. So, of course, it's good to to realize the generation gaps that we have and sit together to find the bridge. It's good, but it's very good to understand why. It's very good to understand the driving motive. It's very good to sit together with that driving motive and the, the feedback will be, will find something to pull one another instead of pushing one another, listening to one another. And then before I conclude, the owner is Jesus of the ministry. And he is older than anyone who is here, no matter of ages, no matter of generations. He was there. And uh, I know uh, Prisca is representing the young generation, but there is another generation that is there. And uh, there is another generation that I left home, the one who was born last week. <laughs> Those are generations. But the good thing we have is that the Jesus we have is always the same in all generations. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we are serving that special, that, that special Jesus, that amazing God who is always the same. And they never changed the mission he had. From the beginning, the mission that he has given to us is the same. So it's good to understand what Jesus is calling all of us to be and to look like. When we look like a Jesus, all other details will be minor. The big issue is when we are, yeah, I love what some of the panelists said. When, uh, when we focus on the discipline more than engaging people to know Christ, that's so dangerous. That's so dangerous. It's good to know we are really following the Jesus. And when we accept, when we follow Jesus, all other things will be simple and easy and they find the solutions on the table so as i conclude there are five ways that jesus is calling us as we are continuing the ministry 
there are five ways that Jesus is calling all of us to have or to be. One is recognize God is a sovereignty over our lives. Hallelujah. Can you write it somewhere? Recognize God's sovereignty over our lives. God has all authority, control over what we, what we see. And uh, it's not by chance that we live when, where we do. It's by God's plan. He has a purpose. And even being here, being in Adepel, it's good to recognize. So why God brought me here? Be someone who depends on the God, his will. And number two, pray often according to the will of God. As we continue his ministry, if we understand, if we all, uh, we are all sure that the ministry we have is the ministry that is started of Jesus, that belongs to Jesus, and Jesus himself prayed, we need to spend the time praying. And number three, obey the Holy Spirit in serving and loving our neighbors. Let's obey the presence of the Holy Spirit. As we serve, let's be spiritual led. Let's listen to his voice. God created us for good works, as it's in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. You young generation, God has created you to serve. Don't be observant. And you old generation, you know what? You are in the presence of God. You are as old as the young generation. You know that. We have the same age in the heaven, in, in the eyes of God. And the, the, that God want all of us here to serve. It's amazing to tell you that in the eyes of God, you have the same age of your daughter and your son. That's why in the house of the Lord, even he or she is your son, your child, you call a brother or sister. <laughs> All right. Because in the heaven, <laughs> in heaven, she's your sister. And uh, no matter of seniority, no matter of babies and the what, we are all the children of God. Hallelujah. And that's why this becomes a family, and the owner of the family is God. And serving God, it's good to be in the good relationship with the Father, Heavenly Father. And number four is tell what Jesus has done for us. Be honest about who we are. It's a good to be honest, to share with other people what God has done for us. There are other things that we can share. You know, there are so few or many things that people will offend about you and the church. But there are other good things that God has done. It's good to know what are other good things we have in the church that we can share with others. Kuko, haribaza kuchallenging ishuwe nyishi, baku gini vada kunda There are people who will challenge you with all the other things that they don't love in the church. And uh, we will never find a response. Even, what, even when we sit together and say, we change this and that. Tomorrow, we'll have another list. Am I right? Because even what you have today, I know they are what you are complaining today, but a list of them are new. I remember, uh, I don't want to bring all those examples, but we will not change everything to the level Everyone is satisfied because the new things comes every day. And again, we'll never have a church with no boundaries. It's like saying you will start a marriage, a family, 
with no boundaries. That's why, yeah, and I, I do understand there are things to change, but what matters is how do we enjoy the good things we have? And number five, remember we are invited. We are called to invite others to, be, to believe to Jesus. That's our everyday work for believers. Let's all see the opportunities we have to bring people to Jesus. That's why I love when you talk about the other strategies of discipleship, of engaging people, the content, what we need to bring with the heart of soul, with the heart of reaching to other many people who are not able to come to church. What can we do for other people to receive Jesus Christ? Let the Holy Spirit come first as the one we have to lead us. Once again, I would like to say thank you and uh, reminding you that we are created to glorify the Lord. Thank you so much. Let's pray. <clears throat> Lord, we thank you for this wonderful time we have. We have been discussing about the generation gaps, but we know very well you are the creator. You are the one who started the ministry. You don't have the bias in the ages uh, because you are always there. Thank you for calling us and uh, giving us the ministry. Thank you for starting the ministry. We are praying everyone who is here to embrace that voice to continue the ministry, to serve and uh, to listen to you. And as uh, we continue discussing on the uh, the strategies on one, what you need to change, continue to speak to us. Give us an uh, open heart to listen to you and uh, uh, speak to everyone who, who is uh, engaged in this discussion, either here or the other place, for first to hear to you what you want us to change first and uh, receive the new things. Lord, we bless you and we thank you for what you do and who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. May God bless you.